Hi, I'm Tony Nichols and welcome to Chamber Chat. Hi, welcome to this edition of Chamber Chat, a program put together by the Salisbury Area Chamber of Commerce to keep you informed of what's going on in your community and in your chamber. We have the pleasure of uh, this edition of having a first-time guest at Chamber Chat, Hal Chernoff, owner and uh, operator of Main Street Gym here in Salisbury. Hal, welcome to the program, man. Good to be here. You know, everybody knows of Main Street Gym, you know, you know, before you move to your current location, you know, everybody would ride up and down and, and see it on uh, Main Street, if you will, um, but there might be a little bit more to the gym than people know. Uh, so, could you give a little, a little bit of the backstory about how Main Street Street Gym came to be? I've always been a boxing fan. Um, born and raised in upstate New York, where the Boxing Hall of Fame is, and boxing's big all over. But boxing was a, a big sport up there as well, you know. And um, when I moved down to Maryland, there was no boxing. Right. I got into martial arts and karate and received my black belt, but I was always gravitating toward boxing. And uh, eventually some of the kids in the karate school started picking up some of the things I did that were boxing things, okay. and they wanted to start training with me outside of karate, which you can't teach that in the, in the dojo, it's disrespectful. Okay, right. So I had a poultry farm over in Parsonsburg with a big machine shed on it, and we set up a ring in there, and I started training some kids that uh, were learning boxing. So that's how it started. Um, I sold the farm, and when I moved into Fruitland, I started looking for a uh, good location. Didn't have much money to work with, mm -hmm. and found the old Trailways bus station, which was owned by uh, Don Hall at the time. And um, Don let us go in there and renovate the building, and he liked the idea. So he was one of the originators, and then Marshall Moore, who's not with us anymore, and the three of us built it just to start training kids because it's a great sport. Well, the, I think the mission has evolved a little bit over the years rather than from just teaching kids how to box. There's, there's a little bit of a, of a different thrust in the mission of Main mm -hmm. Street Gym now. Tell us what that is. Well, it, it, even from the beginning, it started about kids. I mean, it was a passion for the sport and a passion to work with the kids. But once we started actually working with the kids, we saw um, a larger need. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the, most of the kids don't have um, fathers at home or right. single parents. And um, there was something missing, and we just didn't realize that we were filling that void until after a while. And mm -hmm. then we got the feedback, and all of a sudden, the mission changed from just teaching boxing and competing like a, a swim team or some normal right. to actually being um, a place where kids can fit in and a, a real guiding light to some of the kids and, and a way to keep them off the streets and out of a lot of trouble. And it, it became a bigger role and more important and helped more kids as time went on. And then it became one of our main focuses. Now it's, I, I don't like to say it in public, but it's almost like boxing's in the background, even though that's what we're doing all the time and we're competing all the time. It's really more about helping kids than it is about boxing. Well, I think with any sport, uh, and boxing probably, you can, you can speak to this, boxing is probably no different than any other sport. The, the lessons that I learned growing up being an athlete and, and playing sports went much further than the field that I was playing on, the mm -hmm. sport that I was playing, and I would think boxing and, and what you guys bring to the table has to plug right into that concept. It's an intense sport, and it takes a tremendous amount of commitment, and with that comes the responsibilities and all the character building things that, that come along. Um, you know, it's a pressure cooker in that ring, and you have to learn to be calm, you need to be cool, you have to be respectful to your your sparring partners and your opponents, and a lot of the kids that come in there, they gravitate to it because they like the idea of the, the toughness that goes along right. with boxing. Right. So they're tough kids, and some of them have been problem, a lot of them have been problem kids from the street. And when they get in there and find out how they have to conform in order to get good at that sport, mm -hmm. that's where the change that starts in their life. Takes, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I would think, uh, you know, playing football, when, when someone ran into me or hit me good and, and rang my bell, I had a helmet on. I would think it takes a little more discipline to get punched in the mouth um, and be able to be disciplined enough to to not take that personal and, and stay in your game. It's really amazing because um, 
when you start watching the sport, like we're competing this Thursday night over in Baltimore, the first thing you'll see, no matter how heated a battle is in the ring, the very first thing you'll see when the bell rings is two guys embrace, hug each other because they understand the respect um, and, and what the other guy is going through to be there. They know the work they're putting in and you know, you just have to give respect and uh, admiration to the other guy for how hard he's worked right. to, to be there. Couldn't agree more. Um, what kind of programs do you guys plug into around the area? Um, juvenile services targets kids to us. We've got mm -hmm. um, uh, Maryland wraparound, um, the court system, uh, the teachers, principals. When we first started, there was a negative concept when you talked about the word boxing because there was no boxing around here. Right. So immediately everybody thought Muhammad Ali and brain damage and right. the violence of boxing. Nobody understood the amateur part of boxing, sure. which is safety first, sportsmanship, mm -hmm. rules, regulations, and um, everybody was a little bit leery of it, and especially the schools. Once they saw what we were starting to do with the kids that they were having problems with, it did a 180 degree turnaround and we went from being kind of looked at as a place where you teach violence and, and boxing would carry onto the street to being a place where they were actually targeting kids that they were having problems with and said, can you do something with this child or this child? And we were like, absolutely, give us your hardest core cases. That's what we want. We love the challenge. You know, if you think about it, now I'm sitting here thinking as you're describing, you know, the, the amateur side of boxing. It's really the amateur side of life and, and bringing up a kid when you, you're teaching the foundations of boxing that tie right into the foundations of a productive citizen, regardless of, of what walk of life you come from. It's, it's amazing because as a coach that's been in this 30 years now, you find out that some of the characteristics that have to do with how you live your life and, and outside of boxing are really critical to making mm -hmm. it in the sport. You have to be personable because if people don't like you, they're not going to root for you. Sure, that's right. And um, I've got kids that when we go to fights in Baltimore, you know, there's just people that like them. They like their smile, they like them, and then they like their intensity in the ring. But it's a whole package. They want to see kids that are polite, respectful. They want to see personable kids. And when, you, when you're like that, you win the crowds over. Sure. And um, there's nothing better to be up in that ring and have people like you. So even if you're a great fighter and you're not really a good kid, that comes out. So if you're disrespectful, if you're not a good sportsman, you're not going to have the crowd behind you. It's going to be difficult to train you. So everything ties together. You're right. That's cool. You, do you have any events coming up? And, and you know, how often do, do, we, do your events happen? Well, we have fundraisers at the gym, and we also have um, boxing events that happen at the gym. Um, we don't do that many of them. I want to start doing more this year. We're getting more and more geared up to do them. Um, we're looking for... Um, a way to make it easier all the time. So like right now, we're, we're looking for more chairs for the gym because that would make it easier for us. But um, we've been asked to host a regional tournament, the Junior Olympic Tournament, which is a big, oh, wow. a big tournament for kids up to 16 years old. So they'll fight in their own uh, areas, Philadelphia, D.C., Baltimore, or, but we are Baltimore, and um, Pennsylvania, Virginia, West Virginia. And the winners of all those teams will come to Salisbury and fight in the Junior Olympic regional tournament. From there they'll go on to the nationals and then from the nationals they'll have a, a larger world competition after that. Well certainly as the the events um, uh, amp up make sure you lean on the chamber to get the word out. Um, but but how would someone go about supporting Main Street Gym? Well certainly they can call me and or they can stop by the gym. They can go to our website which is MainStreetGymSalisbury.com. Um, Salisbury is abbreviated and uh, they can also go to our Facebook page, just Main Street Gym, and um, make a donation. You can do it online or you can contact us in person. Um, if they come by and see the gym, if you hadn't seen the gym, people need to come by and see the gym. We love to have people come by because uh, cool. most, most of the time when people actually stop by and see what we do, we've got them then because right. you know it, it's hard to explain how much we do for the kids and how good things are and how structured the program is. But once somebody comes in, they're like, in disbelief. And it might be the only place on the Eastern Shore where you can see Sandy Fitzgerald on the speed on bag. On the speed bag. And she can run a speed <laughs> bag, believe me. She's uh, actually pretty good on it. Uh, um, we also have a fundraiser coming up on March 4th, which is a Friday night. And that's how we keep the gym going. You know, fundraisers of all different types and raffles and whatnot. But that's going to be called Concert in the Ring. And we did one last year. It was a huge event. People loved it. 
and everybody wanted us to do it again. So we're going to have On the Edge is going to be our main dance band, okay. and then um, on the MC, Don Hall's new band called 50 East is going to be opening the night, and uh, they'll be doing a set. So it's going to be another great evening. The people that came out last year had a ball, and uh, it's going to be, I think, better this year. And that's March 4th. So call me if you want to reserve a table or tickets for that. Uh, making a big impact on the community, brother. Thanks for what you do, and thanks for coming on Chamber Chat. Well, thank you. It's been a pleasure to be here, and I love being part of the Chamber. I think it's a great organization, and I'm very proud to be part of the Salisbury Area Chamber. Thank you very much. We'd like to give you an opportunity now to take a look at the upcoming events with the Salisbury Area Chamber of Commerce. Welcome back to the Chamber Chat, right here on Pack 14. Joining us now is Robin Kokenhauer. Yes. I got that. <laughs> uh, with Peninsula Home Care. Welcome to the program. Yes, thank you very much. I appreciate you being here. Robin, we're coming up in Feb to, on February, and February's upon us, and we're, we're talking about Valentine's Day, and we're talking about hearts, and we're talking about love and romance. But there's a, 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 another heart involvement as it relates to uh, February. What's that? Yes. Uh, February is, is Heart Awareness Month or Heart Month, they call it, uh, to make people more aware of heart disease. Heart disease is, um, is, is a really serious problem in our, in our community and so February is the time that we try to make people aware and teach them about heart disease. From my insurance days, <laughs> because I had to have a few statistics at hand, um, I happen to know that one in four deaths are caused by heart disease. There are, and it's it's really growing also in the, uh, the female population as well. A lot more women are mm -hmm. having heart problems with heart disease and, and heart attacks than, than even men are now. So it's more important than ever that we're talking about it and getting the message out there. I want to get into the weeds about heart disease in, in just a minute, but mm -hmm. heart disease is something that is 100% preventable. It is, it is, um, but it's 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 very hard <laughs> to do that because it requires a lot of um, a lot of lifestyle moderation and changes and things like that. So many of the risk factors involve our diet or whether we smoke or how much alcohol we drink, and so it's 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 tough. It's easy it's easy to get it and hard to <laughs> hard to prevent it right, or hard well, to get rid of it. <laughs> the, it. It falls into the New Year's resolution mm -hmm. or lack thereof or. Right. Follow, failing to follow through with uh, exactly. all, the, all those good things that we have intentions to do. Exactly. Tied into the heart disease, so. That's right. Thank you for that very much. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what, what causes heart disease? Yeah, so the main cause of heart disease is what we call coronary artery disease or a buildup of, of plaques or cholesterol is a more common term that people probably know. It builds up in your arteries and it makes that opening very, very narrow so mm -hmm. the blood can't get through. Um, people that have high blood pressure, that's mm -hmm. a big risk factor. People that smoke, again, smoking narrows those arteries even more, so right. smoking, um, alcohol intake, and stress too can, can lead to that. Um, the, other big, the other really big thing is diabetes. I think people really minimize the effect. Di diabetes is a, a really horrible disease mm, that affects is. all organs of our body, sure. your heart, your liver, everything. Mm -hmm. So that's something else that needs to be considered, that if you are diabetic, you're already at an increased risk just from having diabetes. Even if you are eating perfectly and exercising, right. you're, you're already at risk because of your diabetes. Mm -hmm. So risk factors to take mm -hmm. into consideration. What should we what should we be looking for? Sure, absolutely, absolutely. So the first thing is the the high cholesterol, your diet. Uh, you want to make sure that if you are eating a real high high fat diet, those trans fats, those saturated fats that we all love. My favorite food in the whole wide world <laughs> is fried chicken. Yeah, see that's fat. But I tell people that I don't eat it much anymore because it will right. kill you. Right, exactly, exactly. Yeah. But all the good stuff we love, the chips, the fries, right. all the sure. good stuff has that in there. Yeah. So we have to look at that in, in moderation. So certainly high cholesterol is a huge risk factor. Mm -hmm. Your blood pressure, high blood pressure, a huge, huge risk factor. Again, diet can, can help with that. Smoking is a huge 
risk factor, um, how much alcohol intake you have, and how sedentary your, your lifestyle is. Right. You know, if you can be active, you don't have to be crazy like, you know, at the gym every day or whatever, but even just a, just a couple hours a week sure. of, of some kind of exercise, walking, um, anything at all, if, if that, but that sedentary lifestyle can also be a risk factor for you. Well, and I would think, you know, it's, it's so much more prevalent in today's work environments because how many people 30 years ago weren't sitting in front of a computer and all day, all do. every day? And now that's, that's right. you know, at least in our work life, back then we were, it was, it was more physical labor or you're standing all day or you're moving around and now it's exactly. sitting in front of a computer screen. Exactly. So that, that, I would, I would, that has to add to the, oh, 100%. To the problem. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. 100%. So, okay, here's, here's the hard part. Mm -hmm. What can people do to prevent Heart disease. Right, exactly. So one of the things, one of the biggest things is in the beginning is you want to always consult with your doctor. You need to, to talk to your doctor, think about your family history. But things that you can do easily is modify your diet. You know, like we said, less of those trans fats, less of those saturated fats, more more whole grains and more lean meat and more fish and mm -hmm. those kinds of things, mm -hmm. those dietary changes mm -hmm. you can make, you know, right away. Um, you want to limit your alcohol intake. Quit smoking if you can. Again, reach out to your physician. Sure. There's all kinds of medications and things that can help with that. Get your blood pressure under control, whether that's through diet by decreasing your sodium um, or through activity or, again, your doctor. You might, some people need medication in order to control their cholesterol, in order to control their blood pressure. So, you know, definitely go, go to the doctor and, and have blood work done and, and get checked out to make sure that you're, you're doing enough to decrease those, those risk yeah, factors. Yeah, I would think in terms of the eating, sometimes that is, that's, uh, I, I, and I know I, there have been times in my life, I worked out and I was very physically mm -hmm. fit because I wanted to eat crazy. Right. <laughs> so that was, you know, that was still bad, that balance, but, yeah. but I would think with, with the food intake, even if it's just a change in, in, in moderation to begin with, Absolutely. not even the change, just a, something, right. taking that step. Cut I've it always, in half. I've yeah. always told people to get to whatever goal, to, to get across the street. Yeah. You got to step off the curb That's first. right, one step at a time. And so <laughs> stepping off that curb sometimes is the hardest thing. So maybe not even changing the food, just changing the, the amount the, in moderation, and then you can work all the other stuff in. So e any little small step, it doesn't have to be something of, of great magnitude, a small step right, can I make agree. all the difference in mm -hmm. the world. Absolutely. Okay, tell us about exercise. Okay, so <laughs> so exercise is good. Like I said, I don't believe in, I don't think that you have to be crazy right. to be, to, you know, if, if you can do that kind of thing and get to the gym and be all, you know, aerobic all the hey, time, all I think that's great. Right. I think that's great. Did, but, did you know that Hal Chernoff was here before you with Main Street Gym? <laughs> I did, did yeah. not. I'm glad he didn't come after you. Yeah, he doesn't know me, I'm sure, because <laughs> I don't. But I do think that walking um, is a great, a great exercise, and it's something simple that we all can do. And you and again, just like with, with modifying your diet, you can start out slow. Right. You know, you don't have to take off from your house and walk two miles. Right. You know, start out slow mm -hmm. and gradually add a little bit every day. I think it's good if you walk with a friend or you walk with music because the time goes a That's lot right. faster because you're talking mm -hmm. to somebody or you're listening to something before you know it, you know, you've walked around the block and back right. and that, that's a great place to start. So mm -hmm. just being a little more a little more active I think is is, is the key yeah, just to that. A, just a little bit and even yep. you know walking to around the cul-de-sac or exactly. you know, it doesn't have to be and I think maybe maybe you've experienced this when you talk to people people feel like they can't it's not enough mm -hmm. um, you know I, I don't have the right clothes to go to the gym I don't have the money to buy the right kind of food right that's where just those small little mm -hmm. changes. Absolutely. Walking down the street, walking mm -hmm. to the to the end of the mm -hmm. cul-de-sac, changing the diet in, if moderation, if nothing else. Right. Exactly. All everybody can do that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, and it makes it it makes an entire difference. Um, I, I look at it from from a standpoint of um, it, it's it's as it's as much for everyone else around you as it is for yourself. Absolutely. Because you know we're impacting the people around us sure. with our health. Absolutely. It makes all the difference in the world. Um, a lot of times the, you know, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll have that wake up call. Mm -hmm. And the wake up call is a visit to the emergency room or the, right. the, the Eurodoxin or the mm -hmm. wherever it is. Right. Um, what are some signs and symptoms mm -hmm. that would tell us we need to go see Sure. Someone? The biggest thing is that people minimize 
they they think oh it's indigestion or it's my gallbladder or it's but if you're having um, chest pressure and pain or sharp pain in your chest or even just pressure some people will say it feels like an elephant sitting on my chest um, if you're experiencing nausea vomiting sweats shortness of breath um, all those things are indications the pain in your chest also can radiate to your jaw even mm, your that. shoulder down your arm your back some people have back pain all those things are really serious signs that you have to take seriously um, and certainly getting help immediately having someone call 911 you know doing those things getting help immediately because the sooner you get treatment for those kinds of things the better. Um, you know, you're going to need medication, you're going to need IVs, you're going to need, you know, so getting intervention right away is, is really, really important. One thing that they encourage out, you know, kind of out in the community too, and when you learn about CPR and stuff is, is an aspirin. Oh, yeah, um, right. You know, someone's having mm -hmm. chest pain and you think you're having, yeah. a, you know, mm -hmm. it can't hurt. Stick an aspirin under your tongue and just, and just, just let it dissolve while you're calling 911 and getting, getting mm -hmm. to where you, where, where you need to be. Robin, I think you've uh, given us some valuable information. Thank you for coming in to Chamber Chat and sharing with us. Thank you very much. Um, Thank you, you very a, much. You got a little something you want to show yes, us? Yes, I do. Um, we are in celebration of, of Heart Month and to increase awareness. You'll see our staff, our Peninsula Home Care staff, out wearing these scars while we're there out taking care of patients. And so we're doing that um, to make people aware and to um, make sure that uh, when you see this red scarf that, you know, maybe you, maybe you walk a little bit longer that day. <laughs> Right. Use a little, little, use a little less salt. So, right, thank you sharing. very much. Thank Robin, you, Robin. Uh, thanks for joining us on Chamber Chat, and, and we'll uh, we'll see you walking. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> Have a good day. We'd like to give you another opportunity now for to take a look at the upcoming events with the Salisbury Area Chamber of Commerce. Welcome back to Chamber Chat right here on PAC-14. Joining us now is Chelsea Micah with the Emerging Leaders of the United Way of the Lower Eastern Shore. Hi, Chelsea, Tony. welcome to Chamber Chat. Thanks for having me. So we, everyone knows or they think they know uh, what the United Way is. Um, but you're not here to talk about the United Way as a whole, but more importantly, a, uh, a subset, if you will, mm -hmm. of the United Way, something that's, I think, fairly new. Yeah. The Emerging Leaders. Tell us what that is. Sure. Um, our Emerging Leaders Society was actually formed in 2010. Okay. Um, we started out as the Young Leaders Society, but we kind of evolved into the Emerging Leaders. Uh, we were formed as a way to recognize our young professional donors, uh, but also as a way to really get them involved in the community. Well, I think it's vital because with any organization, the United Way, the Chamber of Commerce, Salisbury as a whole, um, it's, it's not the, the leaders of today that are going to make us what we're going to be tomorrow. It's the emerging leaders, mm -hmm. to steal your name, um, that are going to carry that torch. So yeah. I, I think it's a, a great concept. What, what is your mission? Uh, well, I would say the mission of our emerging leaders is to really encourage and promote the spirit of philanthropy and volunteerism um, within young professionals here on the Eastern Shore. Okay. So when you, when you, if you could define the emerging leader. Well, we are, I would say we're, we're within the 20 to 45 range. Um, we're certainly not turning anyone away who wants to be involved. I could almost but that's be an emerging kind of, leader, by the way. Anyone can be an emerging leader. We're, we are the young and the young at heart, uh, as we like to call there it. There you go. So it, it really doesn't matter what background you have, what walk of life you come from. There's a, there's a place for everyone. Uh, with the emerging leaders. Definitely. Um, if you're a member of our community and you're passionate about improving it, um, we want you to be involved. Uh, we would love to have you. So you guys not only you know are you know the emerging leaders, but you're plugging right into the mission of United Way. You're going in and doing the presentations um, in the businesses, in the corporations, and finding new donors. Everything that um, the United Way is about. Just yeah, we certainly encourage our, our emerging leaders to get their colleagues involved, to get their uh, companies involved. Uh, mm -hmm. We do volunteer projects, and uh, we just, we're all about going out into the community, doing what we can to improve where we live. Yeah, I've been to some of those events myself. Um, now, I understand that the emerging leaders are partnering with another 
emerging leader platform, if you will, uh, the young professionals with the Salisbury Area Chamber of Commerce. Mm -hmm. How's that going? Why are you guys getting together? We are really excited to be partnering with the Chamber's young professionals. Um, this kind of came about because we we like to offer our emerging leaders kind of opportunities for professional growth, networking, and not that we were we were lacking a little bit and so we wanted to partner with the Chamber's Young Professionals to kind of help boost that for our emerging leaders. Um, additionally, we have more of the volunteer aspect that I think the Young Professionals are looking for and so we are really looking forward to working together and working on some of these projects together, opening our meetings to one another and opening doors for each other. Well, it sounds, I was going to say it sounds like uh, very much the case where both organizations will benefit from the, you know, the knowledge, the the street and the feet, if you will, uh, or the feet and the street and the feet, the feet and the street um, aspects of when you need volunteers, there's, a, there's another source of people mm -hmm. because that's the, uh, many times it's, you're looking for those people and you, and you can't keep tapping the same people over and over mm -hmm. again because there's only so much time in a day. Um, what kind of events do you guys typically have and what might be some of those events that are uh, coming up? We actually had a kickoff event with the uh, Emerging Leaders and the Chamber's Young Professionals at EVO last month in January. It was a big success. I would say there were probably around 60 people that showed up. Mm -hmm. um, so that was awesome, just getting the groups together. There were a lot of new faces, which tells us that there's more people that are looking to get involved, which is great. We love having new people come out. Um, aside from that, this spring we're going to do, be doing some volunteer projects. Uh, we did a wheelchair ramp build in the fall and we would love to do one again in the mm -hmm. spring. Just going in, building a ramp for a resident in need. Um, we're also looking to do some more guest bartending fundraisers that have been a good success for us. Right. And there's always lots of stuff coming up. Yeah, there's always something to do and plug into. But uh, once again, the, you know, I think the, from what I'm hearing, you know, Emerging Leaders is just a channel. That's just a conduit to, to allow young people or, or people that are coming up um, in their profession or business um, to plug in um, and feel wanted. Um, it's always been needed, but I don't know if there's ever been the feeling of you're wanted. And I think that's, that might be a, a good platform that you guys are creating to let people know just because you may be a 20-something or 30-something, your ideas, talents, gifts are wanted um, and more so needed um, in the community. Yeah, definitely. This generation, um, we're going to grow up to be the leaders here and we are working to, you know, get our, get our community involved, get our emerging leaders, you know, involved with the young professionals and I think it's really going to be a win-win for everyone. How can people find out more? How can they get involved? Sure. Uh, give me a call at United Way. I would love to talk to you, love to hear from you. Um, shoot me an email if that's easier and I look forward to talking to you. Chelsea Micah, Emerging Leaders with the United Way. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Tony. Thanks for having me. We'd like to thank you for joining us on this edition of Chamber Chat. And as always, if you've missed a portion of this edition or you'd like to view previous editions of Chamber Chat, we'd encourage you to visit PAC14's website and utilize their on-demand feature or visit the Chamber's website. That's all the time we have for this edition of Chamber Chat. My name's Tony Nichols, your host, encouraging you to make a difference. <music>